Hello, everybody. This is Stuart McMorrow. I'm the Deputy Chief for Forestry Assistance for CAL FIRE. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about the CFIP program, otherwise known as the California Forest Improvement Program, and how it can be used to help support prescribed fire. But first, um, I want to present a little information about the program itself. The CFIP program was first initiated in 1978. And the purpose of this program was to encourage investment in California's forest lands by allowing cost share payments to be made to owners of private forest lands so they can conduct improvement projects on their property. This program can provide eligible landowners with technical and financial assistance for planning, reforestation, and other resource management investments that improve the quality and value of their forest. As I mentioned, it is a cost share program that reimburses landowners up to 90% of the cap rate for allowable activities. These cap rates are listed by practice type in the CFIP user's guide, which is available on the CAL FIRE website. All of the submitted projects to this program are subjected to being ranked by a, a common form that is used with uh, common questions. And so project selection is done on a quarterly basis and it's based on the ranking status. Basic eligibility includes landowners who have 20 acres at minimum and no more than 5,000 acres of forest land. That forest land is defined as being able to support at least a 10% canopy of native trees. Uh, eligible landowner types include individuals, married couples, uh, multiple related or unrelated uh, landowners and families, corporations, legal partnerships, trusts, public entities, agencies, and nonprofits. So a wide array of ownership types are eligible for this program. The land must be zoned for timber production, TPZ, or zoned for uses that are compatible with forest management. Properties with conservation easements do qualify also as long as the forest management practices are slated as being allowed in the easement. CFIP cannot be used to complete the requirements of other state programs, i.e. timber harvesting plans or exemptions and, and other uh, compatible uh, or contracts. Eligible practices must comply with the established rates those rates are broken into two categories, either contractor rates or self-labor rates. That means if the landowner themselves would like to do the work with their own equipment, that is self-labor. If they're going to hire somebody, they use a contractor rate. This also requires a CAL FIRE approved forest management plan for the entire ownership that needs to be in place before any groundbreaking work can be proposed. The Short list of allowable CFIP practices can include management plan development. So once a landowner uh, decides they want to participate in the program, they can actually apply for costs to cover the management plan itself and any other practices that they know they want to complete at that point. They can also help pay for registered professional forester supervision on the project, which is a mandatory piece of the program. The program pays for site preparation, tree planting, tree shelters, follow-up uh, activities to the planting. We can pay for pre-commercial thinning, release, pruning, follow-up slash disposal. Now, the follow-up slash disposal can include burning piles, um, chipping the material, or hauling it off. It can also pay for other habitat improvement projects, but these projects are limited to certain practices and we need to have forestry assistance specialists approval on site before we can think about that. So for anything outside of these practices listed here, it's best for a landowner to contact a forester and have those individuals contact one of our forestry assistance specialists in the field, and then we can talk about it. Now, getting on to how CFIP and prescribed fire can interact, CFIP can support future prescribed fire activities by providing funding for allowable practices that can help to prepare stands for eventual fire introduction. So CFIP can fund the following practices that may support future burn efforts, and that would be, of course, the development of the management plan is a key piece, but pre-commercial thinning, limbing, and follow-up slash disposal tend to be the three practices that are best compatible with future prescribed fire. Now, we do need to realize that CFIP cannot fund the development of control lines, the burn plan, smoke plan, equipment, or crews to conduct the actual burn. 
or pay for any other activities directly tied to the burn. CTIP is guided by a program environmental impact report, regulations and statute, of course. And so these guiding documents they are the limiting factor for including prescribed burning in the CFIP program directly. None of these guiding documents actually contemplate or mention any practices that support prescribed fire. The only type of burning allowed under CFIP is pile burning as a follow-up slash disposal activity. Therefore, CFIP must be used as a standalone project on private property. It cannot be used as the funding source to implement a VMP or VTP type project or any other prescribed fire preparation sponsored by CAL FIRE. RPFs and landowners should use the forest management plan template to address activities that need to be implemented over time that lend to, that lend to a forest stand being receptive to prescribed fire project. So although CFIP isn't a program designed specifically for prescribed fire implementation, it does encourage the development of forest stands that will be healthy, resilient, and in a much better position to benefit from future prescribed fire projects. Each CAL FIRE unit has a VMT forest, uh, forester coordinator who is their local point of contact for questions related to how our VMP and prescribed fire programs work. There are a few basic steps to getting started with a CFIP project. First and foremost is to contact your local forestry assistance specialist and pre-consult with them about the project. These phases, as we call them, are listed on the CAL FIRE CFIP website. The first step is to complete an initial application. And before you do that, you do need to find uh, and contract with a, with a registered professional forester. The FAS will perform a field inspection and make sure that your project is uh, truly eligible and compatible with the program, and then help you get to a point where you can submit a final application. Once that final application is filed and ranked using our priority ranking uh, list, we then move forward with funding projects on a quarterly basis and your project is either approved or denied of course but if it is denied it is sent back to you and our FAS is able to work with the landowner or forester to help them um, come up with a, a project that will rank higher and hopefully get, be scored in the next round. Currently CFIP is offering 1.5 million dollars per quarter. Uh, the next application deadline is May 31st of this year. A little on the forest management plan. This is a requirement under the CFIP program that this be in place before any work can be done. So really your first CFIP contract is going to be with the forest management plan or for the forest management plan and hiring a registered professional forester to write your plan is what is usually needed. Again, CFIP cannot pay for the development of a burn plan or a smoke management plan, but elements from this forest management plan can clearly be included into those other plans. And so with that, uh, there is some benefit to uh, doing that piece of the program. Now for landowners who want to do some or all of the work themselves, uh, they can use their own equipment, but they must use the lower cost share cap rates and hourly rates specified under self-labor in the user's guide. Self-labor may be performed by the landowner, their family members, and or direct employees and must be explained and justified in the project description. So again, contractors can be used or landowners can do some or all of the work themselves. So a few things to remember as we wrap this up. Under CTIP, landowners must pay for the upfront costs of the project work before being reimbursed. Again, it's a up to a 90% reimbursement rate. And for 2020, we are now offering advanced payments of up to 25% of the total program project cost. So uh, landowners or foresters will need to talk to the forestry assistance specialist at the time of application to learn more about that. CFIP can't pay for any aspect of implementing a prescribed fire, but it can help prepare a forested property for future prescribed fire projects. So to get started, landowners hire an RPF, contact their local forestry assistance specialist, and move through the steps from there. The CFIP webpage is listed below. Thank you very much.